Workout three of the gymnast throwdown is four time. You will complete 100 alternating dumbbell snatches. The kicker, every minute on the minute, you will complete 12 air squats. The workout will begin with 12 air squats. Okay, folks, you've heard it. You know what workout three of the gymnast throwdown is. Now we're about to head down to the floor and watch Alex and Tammy go head to head. Battle of the midgets. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Ant, before we watch this workout, I had the privilege of watching this, most of it, live. Yep. What are your thoughts? What do you think we're going to see in this workout? Is this a sub three, a sub four, a sub five? Are they going unbroken? Um... Well, I know I've been doing a lot of um, unbroken, like fast dumbbell snatches recently. And um, within a minute of work, I'm just shy of 30 reps. So if we're taking that into account and then saying they have to do 12 air squats beforehand, we know they're both going to squat real fast. It's not, that's basically going to be a non-event, the air squat for these two. Um, that's going to take anywhere between, I guess, like eight to 12 seconds, eight to 10 seconds, let's say, with the dumbbell putting down in between. So we're looking probably in like that, fourth minute they're going to be completing it i assume mm. okay <clears throat> do you think many of our gymnast community have done a hundred snatches in a workout is the first question yes do you think anyone has done a hundred snatches unbroken back to back no me neither well i know that because i haven't programmed it <laughs> but i think uh for sure we've definitely seen people accumulate this amount of repetitions in workouts yeah but it's very very different when you're doing just that one movement over and over again. You know, we're hitting very different limiters here. I think what we're going to see is that the, cha the, the challenge in the aerobic system for sure as we get deeper into the workout, especially for someone who's going to go potentially beyond the four or five minute mark. Yeah. It's going to challenge the aerobic system a little bit more. Muscle endurance though, specifically going over and over and over again on the same movement pattern in the hinge and the overhead of the snatch. Yeah. But even the air squat as well. I think one other thing I'm thinking about is these two people and uh sorry tammy and al move very well in both these movements specifically if you have someone who for example has a squat which is a little bit more hinged over you know maybe a longer limbed athlete or someone who is a tighter squat position and therefore what could potentially start to happen is that the squat position looks quite similar to the hinge position of the snatch it would be a very different workout versus someone who can change up their positions and basically shift fatigue to a different part of their body when they're doing these two movements. Yep. Okay. The reason we started with a bit of an intro is because I know this is going to be fast, which means we don't have that long to talk about what's happening in this workout. So if you're ready to go, let's hit it. Okay. Firstly, Ant, who's your money on in this workout? Uh, well, it was, it was always going to be close because, um, you know, Alex being the shortest male in the entirety of the coastal community, CrossFit community, CrossFit community, um, he was basically the same height as Tammy. So that when, when you're moving and you're looking to go unbroken, when you both have good mechanics, it's just going to be down literally to the wire. Um, so I'm generally thinking like it might be a tie, but my money was on Tammy for this one, just because this is such an, a smooth movement for her. Having said that as well, though, Alex is unbelievably explosive. So he can always rip that dumbbell probably faster than Tammy could rip it, but Tammy could probably accumulate more reps in a row unbroken than Alex could. Yeah, for sure. I think something we just saw there, <clears throat> remember the workout begins with 12 air squats. Where we're looking at the athlete's hips to pass below parallel, full extension to the top. Really, really fast cycle speeds on those air squats to begin with. Yeah. I was actually quite surprised, especially watching Tammy and her air squats, at just how far she was able to actually pull herself down and then push herself up. A lot of people think that the squat is kind of like a free fall or a descending motion into a drive. Now, when you get to both these movements, when you get to more of an elite level, when you're trying to move as fast as you possibly can, there's actually like a pulling down of both movements as well as a driving up. Yeah. So the athlete is working a little bit harder in both positions to speed up their cadence. Yeah. So what we saw there was Tammy to finish her 12 air squats just in front of Al. Now, <clears throat> strategy here. You know, do you put, do you put that dumbbell down uh, a little bit before the end of the minute so you can start your squats right at the start of the minute? Or, you know, potentially do you ride the line a little bit longer, you know, snatch right up until that minute and potentially lose a few seconds before starting the air squat? What are your thoughts? 
it depends. If you know you're going to go straight into it after the air squat, then, yeah, you want to probably give yourself that half second like they both did there before the air squat. If you know that you're going to finish the dumbbell snatch, do the air squat, and then take two or three breaths, then it's a little bit different again. But these guys have got zero break. This workout actually looks like it's in fast forward yeah. right now. Um, okay, so a couple more things to think about here. Uh, the technique used for the dumbbell snatch. Um, so what we're both seeing, what we're seeing here is a touch and go technique. Obviously, remember, both heads of the dumbbell must touch the floor at the same time. And they're passing that dumbbell over midair. But there's a slight difference between the way that Al does it and the way that Tammy does it. Tammy basically brings it down and just above the forehead, she does a changeover. Al is essentially throwing it from the overhead position to his other arm. So both of these techniques have kind of a, a risk factor in a sense. They're not looking at the pass over. They've just done the movement so many times they're really comfortable with it. Uh, so I think for athletes doing this workout, not necessarily try to replicate what these two are doing, but go with something that feels smooth and is easy, right? If you're having to overthink every single rep for 100 reps, that's just an unnecessary added stressor yeah. to this workout. For sure. And now going unbroken with the snatches, what we're seeing here, and these guys are pretty deep into their snatches already, probably looking at finishing up in, in not, too, not too long, is going unbroken uh, with each set of dumbbell snatches in that minute a viable technique or strategy for people to be using? I mean, it, it, it does totally totally depend um, on the cycle of your air squats as well, uh, depending how much time you got. You know, some people might be taking up to 30 seconds to do 12 air squats because they're slowing right down, in which case it's probably worthwhile going unbroken in their, in their dumbbell snatches. Some people might be moving a similar sort of cadence as Al and Tammy are for their air squats, which means that maybe... They want to put the dumbbell down. Maybe they want to pause overhead if they're good overhead yeah. movers. Maybe want to pause at his shoulder. You know, I mean, personally, I would say I would put the dumbbell on the yeah. floor. I want to just pause here because Kiara's done an awesome thing with the video here, which is a countdown, and they're literally going rep for rep. This is going to come down to the millisecond as to who takes a workout. And it's basically Al locks out <laughs> fraction early, and we all know Al struggles with counting at the best of times, so he did an extra rep there anyway. Uh, but that was actually super impressive. And I think just to kind of have a look at the, the rep countdown, super consistent. I think every, the, the three sets, which essentially is what they did, was always between 26 to 28 repetitions. Mm. So a bit of a drop off. We definitely saw the cycle speed of Tammy's squats drop off a tiny bit. Yeah. Um, and obviously that split second could be the difference between, you know, first and second place in that workout. I would say, you know, I'm, I'm backing my misses up on this one here. But... Let's go, babes. But Alex started each set the same hand as Tammy did and then the final set he started with a different hand so they actually finished on different arms so I don't know who is in the right and who is in the wrong there because it's the alternating technically one, one of them is going to be getting a no rep so if it was Al and he did that extra rep then technically Tammy wins interesting technically just remember that so just a bit of it's a good point it's a good point so if you finish the left arm snatch put the dumbbell down then go into your 12 air squats you then got to start the next set on your right arm so we can go back and watch the video later on, but or you can do it on your video right now to be to be confirmed. Okay, so a few things to think about here. In conclusion, when it comes to strategy, yeah, air squat tempo really depends. Firstly, if you are a good squatter, if it's a movement you feel comfortable with, but again, kind of speeding up the cadence of your squats may give you two to three seconds extra. Yeah, in a set, that's probably one extra snatch mm -hmm. it's kind of your decision to weigh that up if that extra bit of effort in doing the squats a little bit faster is worth that extra snatch that's kind of kind of like a you know a, a way off in yeah. this workout the dumbbell snatch technique you gave us a bit of a rundown in terms of you know what is a good strategy now we've only talked about touch and go here or mm -hmm. unbroken there is also potential to slow down your movement but still go unbroken so for example the changeover technique but putting a pause in the overhead position mm -hmm. is going to slow down the cadence and is also going to allow the athlete to basically slow down breathing rate and heart rate yeah. and dissipate fatigue a little bit as well. So loads of different things to think about here. Um, what would you suggest that athletes do in their warm-up before they hit this workout? Um, yeah, I mean, you got to warm up a load of your hinging pattern. Um, you're going to be bending over minimum 100 times, maybe even more if you get a couple of no reps, hopefully not. 
Um, of course, your overhead position, we've got to see full lockout of the arm, so we don't want to see that dumbbell ending up in front of people, which we know happens a lot, especially when they're riding the line. You know, the dumbbell ends up passing over top or the dumbbell arm doesn't actually lock out overhead. So it's important you want the overhead position with a single dumbbell. Um, and of course, the squat. You want to be efficient in the squat. The last thing you want to be doing is getting no reps or riding the line. you got to be just just about hitting depth, standing straight back up. Um, so yeah, your squat pattern, your hinging pattern, your overhead, and of course your aerobic system. Yeah, I think something we always talk about from a strategy standpoint is making sure you're never forced into rest. Mm. And I think with a, with basically a one movement workout like this, you know, the squats are in there making it two, but essentially it's a one movement workout because no one's going to get bottlenecked on the air squat. Yeah. The potential for the bottleneck, meaning the potential to slow you down this workout is going to be in the dumbbell snatch. And if you just go a little bit too hot, too early in this workout, you may just be at the position where you just can't lock out and get that dumbbell overhead anymore. Yeah. And essentially, you're going to have to stand there and rest and recover. So yeah. trying to find a pace that allows you to keep on moving and then perhaps have that extra gear to kick in at the end. I mean, naturally, there will be a slight drop off in pace. You even saw it with Alan Tammy, who are two elites with this movement. They started, I think it was 29 in the first set, 28 in the next, 27. Then it was just whatever was left. Um, so there will be some sort of drop off. So, you know, when you are making your strategy, maybe keep that in mind yeah. rather than trying to hit a consistent 22 every time you got, you're going to get a little bit more fatigued, a little bit more tired. Heart rate's going to be a bit higher. Fatigue's going to be a bit yeah. more in there. So yeah, you might want to just plan for a slight drop off yeah. throughout. The last thing I will say is that I think ga there's a gaming element to this where if athletes are able to finish their snatches, before the start of the next minute, that could save considerable time. Yeah. So for example, if you know you've got 10 snatches left in 30 seconds, it's worth pushing the pace there to try to finish the workout before the next minute starts. Because if you have one snatch to go and the minute hits, you're gonna have to do 12 air squats and then your last snatch, yeah. which is gonna add you know, 20, 30 seconds to your time. So that's, you know, if you're gonna create the strategy beforehand and stick to it, keep that in mind try to finish before that next minute. Or if you're going to be someone a bit more intuitive, like I know Alex and Tammy were, you just got to kind of keep an eye on the clock, understand how many reps you have and when to push and when not to push. Yep. All right, guys. Well, good luck to everyone on the third and final workout of the Gymnast Throwdown. Don't forget to log your scores, film your workout, upload it to YouTube and paste that into your score. To everyone else around the world doing this workout for fun, enjoy it, grab a friend, throw down. And of course, if you want to be a part of our community, We'd love to have you and it's absolutely free. Good luck, everyone. Bye.